everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Week in Review. This is where we take a look at the past week, or in this case, two weeks, and talk about the different games that we reviewed and videos that came out. Um, so, we didn't do one last week because we, there wasn't a ton of reviews, but some of our reviews that we're going to mention have come out two weeks ago. Either way, if you're interested to learn about more of this stuff, you can find out more. Check out the links. I have them all in the description below. Let's get started with... Z. Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here. So over the last two weeks, we put out a new board game blender. Go check that out. We also put out a new best of the month telling you about some favorite new discoveries to us. And I put out two videos detailing top tens of my favorites. So I did a top 10 favorite characters in Elder Sign and a top 10 favorite heroes in The Others to put together a hero team to beat up on the bad guys. And then I did a few reviews as well. So I reviewed uh, all three of the Penny Papers Adventures games. I reviewed uh, The Valley of Huaracocha. This is the most open-ended one. It's the one that they consider to be the most advanced one. It's also the one that has the absolute lowest visual clarity. It's uh, it loses a lot of its uh, attractive factor because it can look a little messy, and it was certainly my least favored one. It also can be very punishing when the bad fa face on the dice is rolled and you just sort of get, you know, hit consistently. It can happen. The other ones have that a little bit too, but in this one it can happen the most because it has the most room for it to happen. Uh, the other ones I, uh, that I reviewed, Skull Island would be my second favorite one. And Skull Island has a really neat mechanism in which you find the coordinates of buried treasure and dig that treasure up with numbers that you rolled on dice, of course. It's the one that feels the most thematic in that way. And it's the one that um, feels the least punishing because it caps out the number of times you can be hit by the bad thing that hits you in the game. So I like that one a little bit more, or quite a bit more really, than the uh, than the Valley one. And then the last one, the Temple of a Peekaboo, is the lightest one of the three. It is also my favorite though. I found it to be uh, the appropriate length of time. It's a very short game, it's kind of punchy, it's pretty interesting. All three of these games are fairly derivative of other games in the genre. But this one uh, mixes the attractive look with that derivative sort of uh, mechanism to give you a package that, that does come across as charming. I also reviewed a game called Dreamcatchers. This is a cooperative game, a very light one, sort of geared towards uh, uh, you know older kids perhaps or families. And in it you are trying to... Um, navigate a child's dreams throughout the night to avoid nightmares. It's very attractive, really pretty game. Simple mechanisms, but I enjoyed it. And then the last one I reviewed was Demon Worker. This is a worker placement game with a very cool twist to it. The uh, You're gathering resources, and you do that a lot, which is something I was worried about, sort of pushing, you know, uh, tokens back and forth and back and forth. But the really neat thing is, you can hire your own unique workers that only you have access to, and they have special powers as well. So I really enjoyed this one. It was sort of a, an indie, uh, you know, sort of a under the radar hit for me. One that I was not expecting, and I really, really enjoyed it. So there you go. That's it for me. I'll see you on the next one. Hey folks, welcome back to another Weekend Review. We did four Miami Dice videos last week. We did one for Luxor, which is uh, really close to a, a roll and move type of game, but you're using a deck of movement cards instead of dice uh, to move around. But there is actually a die that you do roll from, from time to time and then move that many spaces. But the cool thing about the game was the uh, card mechanism and, and how you had to keep your hand of cards in a specific order. And that's what kind of pulled it up away from that roll and move idea. Uh, but I did enjoy it. I gave it a 6 out of 10. Uh, it's basically slightly above average, especially for a family game. Uh, we also did one for a game called Space Race from AEG. And this one was slightly more enjoyable than Luxor. I gave this one a 6.5 out of 10. Uh, the only real thing that I uh, really felt about it is that the ending uh, of the game and scoring points and was rather abrupt. Uh, also did one for the Manhattan Project 2, Minutes to Midnight. And uh, this is a uh, furtherance, I guess you could call it, from Manhattan Project, where 
uh, you're building nukes in that one, you're actually testing them and using them uh, to your advantage in this one. So uh, I do in I, I did enjoy, I, I think I like both of them almost evenly with a slight nod to Minutes to Midnight simply because it does have that uh, interaction between the people that can be missing uh, from minute, uh, from the original Manhattan Project. So that was Minutes to Midnight, 7 out of 10. And then finally, we did one for uh, Pioneer Days uh, uh, from TMG. And this is a really neat dice drafting game that has variable player powers and a lot of different avenues to victory. So I really enjoyed this one. I gave this uh, personally an 8 out of 10. So I think that um, uh, you should definitely give that one a look and uh, see if you might want to pick it up for yourself. Other than those, I also did a live Q&A video last week, so you can go check that out. And then we also did a live playthrough of the new Drop Zone, which is basically a demo kit for Heroes of Blackreach coming out later on this year from Yellow, Devil Pig, and Games Workshop, a collaboration between those three companies. It is basically Warhammer 40k uh, within the Heroes of Normandy system. And it's really fun. Uh, we had a great time playing it. It was a great introductory uh, way to uh, play the game. Uh, so that's also cool. It has a really low price tag. About I think it's around $20 or something like that, the demo kit. Uh, so if you are interested in the game, you want to see how it plays first, it's, it's a pretty good step in. Uh, but Vernon Piper and I played that one uh, live. And then we also, after we finished that, we played a, a, a game of... Warhammer Underworld's Shadespire as well, and the Orcs um, uh, were very fun to play. So that was that. We also did uh, uh, Sam versus the Internet, uh, the seventh out of eight uh, scenarios in the Calkin Goal campaign uh, for Memoir 44. And I am currently having my uh, Tukus handed to me soundly by the internet. So hopefully we can maybe get that back on the next episode, the final episode of that campaign. But you can go check that out. It was fun to play. That's it for me. We'll see you guys on the flip side. Okay, and so for myself, first of all, buy the book. This is a puzzle style game where you're stacking books and trying not to and trying to make a shelf level. It sounds like an interesting puzzle. I got it because I thought it was interesting. And it turns out it's not really that interesting. It's either too easy or too hard to tell if the thing's level. Mm. War of the Buttons. I like this game, especially the theme. The theme is fantastic. It's a worker placement game. The biggest problem with this game is I just don't feel like there's enough options. It feels very straightforward. It doesn't feel like the games are really that different from each other. Tofu Kingdom. Tofu Kingdom is a, a social deduction game kind of for kids where you have the prince... Uh, Moki is trying to find Princess Tofu amongst people, and some people can only lie, some people can only tell the truth. Very straightforward, but silly, small, and fun. Then we have the Little Flower Shop. This is a drafting game. I really like this one um, from Dr. Finn. This is, you're trying to get the flowers and stuff to build up your shop. Very beautiful game. Highly recommend it. Whoosh! This is a speed game where you're turning over cards and trying to match the different symbols that are in monsters and then hit the right monster. There's a lot of different things to watch, so it feels a little bit different from speed games in that manner. And along the same lines, Nut So Fast, which has that same thing where you are grabbing these nut pieces on the board as quickly as you can based on cards that are turned over. They both have actually similar feels. One has chunky bits to it. The other has um, fun artwork. Master of the Elements. This is an expansion for Vikings Gone Wild, and it is my favorite expansion so far. This one is just fantastic. It adds elements. It adds um, uh, gods that you can be. You can be Loki. You can be Thor. You can be Valkyrie. Um, and that's a lot of fun. It gives you some more. It gives more options without bogging the game down. Ice Cool 2. This game is fantastic. I've already liked Ice Cool, but the fact you can combine Ice Cool 1 Ice Cool 2 together to make a big, giant flicking game and or racing game really pushes this one up in my estimation. And Turing Tumble. This is a fan fabulous puzzle style game that also teaches you how to program, which is cool, and lets you watch marbles go down. It is, it's amazing. It's a really cool production. Definitely one I recommend. And then I also did a preview of Critical Mass, which is fantastic and amazing, coming from our Arcane Wonders Dice Tower Essential line. And that's going to be, they're going to be released at Origins this coming week. And then they'll be hitting the stores in July. 
I also talked about Dirk Hens, my favorite games from him. We talked about the best selling games from May 2018. I did a crowd surfing. I did three boring unboxings, one of them live. If you missed that, I opened a lot of games that were not quite so good in one video. Anyway, that's what we did over the last couple weeks. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching Week in Review on the Dice Tower.